The following has been a Shirt Off Your Back production. ShirtOffYourBackAZ.com Hello and welcome to the Shirt Off Your Back podcast, where we don't know. This is Episode 8, The Benefits of Limitation. Episode 8, The Benefits of Limitation. I recently came across a quote, and I'll read the quote here in a minute, but I recently came across a quote and it sort of got the ball rolling through this whole uh, thought process, this whole cognitive thing, and I started stringing these ideas together and ended up writing a blog post about it and thought I would record a podcast about it. But basically it is um, about limitation and some of the benefits that surround limitation and the things that we can't do. And we'll get into a little bit of uh, collectivism and Marxism and sort of some of the ideas there and why I think intrinsically and philosophically those are bad, why those don't honor people's autonomy and why don't do, why those don't honor people's ideas on how to overcome their own struggles. So in a previous blog post and a previous podcast, I wrote about generative moments. And basically what those are, it's, it's um, and, I, and I talked about how they can be beneficial as well, but what these are, are moments where challenges um, and, and certain ideas, they feel tangible and they feel very real. And you begin to feel change and change feels possible. And you start to brainstorm these ideas and they feel very real. They feel very possible. It feels like you are able to overcome this struggle or overcome this obstacle. And ultimately, in the previous podcast, I talked about this as well. Ultimately, these are born out of frustration, right? You have an aversion for things being a certain way and you have an attraction or a desire for how for a desire for how they ought to be. You have a desire for them to be different. And you might end up feeling limited in your capacity for change, in your capacity to create change, to uh, brainstorm things. And I think there's value in that limitation though because you don't necessarily have to brainstorm ideas or have to think about change if you aren't limited, right? Without the struggle, there's no need for change. There's no need to be creative. There's no need to practice that autonomy as a human being because there is no struggle. And if there is no struggle, there's no limitation. And I'm going to try to make the point here that there's benefit to limitation. So I said at the the outset of the podcast, the opening, I don't know. I think sometimes the smartest thing you can say is I don't know. And set aside the axiom, there's this old axiom that it's better to remain silent and appear wise than open your mouth and be thought a fool. And I really like that phrase. I really like that proverb as it is. Um, and I think it's a worthwhile saying, but it's not useful for our purposes here. I think sometimes saying I don't know is a precursor to a desire for knowledge. And that is sort of not, that's not staying silent, right? That's not keeping your mouth shut. That's saying, you know what? I don't know but I want to try to find a solution to that problem. I want to try to find an answer. Or saying, I don't know, you recognize that you don't know, so you've already sort of transcended that limitation. And that's what we'll get into the quote here. Uh, George Heigl, he was a German philosopher, a founder of German idealism, and I won't pretend to be a scholar or be well educated in this area. I know enough about the psychology and the political philosophies and things like that to speak to it as far as history goes, but I'm by no means an expert. But um, George Heigl, he said, uh, German philosopher, founder of German idealism. He said, the very fact that something is determined as a limitation implies that the limitation is already transcended. And what's really interesting to me here is Heigl's philosophies were essentially inverted, turned around, reversed, turned upside down, and turned into materialist principles by Marx. So basically, Heigl saw value in limitation. He saw um, value in the sense that you would begin to transcendent, be, transcend it because you would know a limitation exists. And if you don't know that a limitation exists, 
then there's no need for transcendence. And Marx, perhaps, I think he saw the limitation as sort of an unnecessary and unwelcome evil, um, an unwelcome by- byproduct of the entire system, that people shouldn't want for things, that people shouldn't need things. And I disagree with that philosophically in the sense that I don't, I don't necessarily think it, there's benefit to being poor. There's not benefit to being po- impoverished. There's not a benefit to being overweight. But if you had everything that you could want and life was perfect, what would be left? You would just exist, right? There would be no struggle. There would be no romance. There would be no story to life. You would just exist. And I'm not saying, suggesting by any means that we should create struggle um, just so we have something to do. We should try to limit as much struggle as possible. Um, but you don't necessarily do that by force. And philosophically and realistically, government can't do anything but by force, right? Uh, taxes are a simple example of that. If you don't pay taxes, there will be some legal repercussions for that, even though you could argue taxes are supposed to be voluntary, right? We have that written into our system. Um, so again, I'm not suggesting that we need to create struggle intentionally and it builds up character or anything like that, but it does in a sense. Uh, there's a song by Frank Turner, uh, it's called Faithful Son, and one of the lyrics in it I really like. He says, what would any of us do if all the dreams we had came true? What would there be left to dream about? Dreams are born out of limitation, right? Triumph is born out of struggle. Without struggle, there is no triumph. So I think one could argue that success is born out of limitation as well. That in order to be successful, there needs to be a struggle. You need to practice. You need to fail. You need to brainstorm ideas and find things that don't work until they do. Um, I use this question a lot at work when I'm working with clients and trying to lose weight or trying to advance in a career and they try different things and they say that didn't work. I always fall back on this. I say, well, how many light bulbs did they try that didn't work until they found the one that worked, right? If they tried a hundred light bulbs and a hundred didn't work and on the hundred first light bulb it worked, that hundred first one was worth trying that 101st light bulb was worth the effort. So think about wisdom, right? There's wisdom in trying again. There's wisdom in transcendence. There's wisdom in knowing that there's benefit and value to limitation. So I am a a psychology major, but I have an emphasis in forensics. So I've studied a little bit of of the legal system, but more on a um, socioeconomic and sociological level, um, things that environments and intangible things in society that create crime and maladaptive or criminal behavior. So in law, the Latin phrase malum prohibitum, it refers to actions the state has deemed unlawful, while malum in se refers to actions collective society or just people in general humanity in general has not only deemed unlawful, but against human nature, against the collective good. So I think wisdom in this sense, in this sense transcends law. Think of law as a square and wisdom as sort of a circle that fits inside the square, right? And we're free to move about inside that circle within our wisdom, but also within the confines of the law. So I think in that sense, wisdom transcends law. These two shapes, they sort of coexist as one entity, but separate entities are representative of this idea, right? So they're together, but they're separate, and and they sort of work in tandem. There is law, and there is collective wisdom. And one, I would say one may not, and probably one cannot exist without the other, right? We would have no law without wisdom, and we would have no wisdom without law, Uh but I think wisdom is found in its pure essence in wisdom in its, in its truest form is found beyond law. So similarly, while limitation exists as that foundation for knowledge, like I talked about, limitation exists and then you, you gather knowledge and you brainstorm ways to overcome that limitation or 
or even just accept that limitation as a limitation, right? I'm 36 years old and five foot seven. I think my chances of getting in the NBA have sailed, right? I think that limitation, um, I'm better off accepting it so I can move on to something else. So I can put my energy and put my cognitive and my emotional focus in another area. So while limitation exists as a foundation for knowledge or a foundation for acquired skill or a foundation for possession of material goods in exchange for labor, I think there's something transcendent that exists far beyond that limitation. So what do you really want? And I use that question a lot at at work too with with clients setting, again, weight loss goals, health goals, uh, career, family type goals. What do you really want? Because what you really want lies beyond what you want. Those generative moments we spoke of in a previous podcast and earlier in this episode, they don't really truly begin until some heavy drilling begins. So in the Coaching Psychology Manual, um, second edition, I've I've referenced this in another podcast, um, the authors note that you might ask someone for, hypothetically, a perfect solution to a particular problem. So basically you would say, somebody comes to you a prob- with a problem and you would say, well, if you could have a perfect scenario, if you could have a perfect solution, a perfect day when it comes to that problem, what would that look like? So consider someone who is, we'll just stick with uh, developing healthy eating habits. We'll sort of stay in that arena. Consider someone who's working on developing healthy eating habits. So an ideal scenario might be They might say something like, I want those habits to be automatic, where I don't have to think about eating well. I want to feel good about what I eat and have time for other activities. And not only would I save time, I'll retain some of the cognitive and emotional energy it takes to maintain a healthy diet. So ultimately, there's a number of motivations there, right? More energy, more time, feeling good about food choices, a desire for a greater sense of autonomy and control when it comes to food. So what this hypothetical dieter really wants lies far beyond what he or she wants, right? The desire to eat well, that's not really the desire. I have a desire to eat healthy. I have a desire to eat well. That's born out of a desire to see, feel, or experience something else. I want to see myself. uh, You might want to look good in a bathing suit. I mean, you might want to look good naked in the mirror, you know, when you look at yourself and say, ooh, I look good. And not in a vain way, but in a way where you feel confident, right? You might want to experience a trip at the beach without hiding under the towel, um, something like that, right? Confidence is, is a very, very good thing, and it manifests itself in a lot of different ways. If you feel confident in your outfit and confident at the beach and confident at the gym, confident when you're going for a jog, um, you're going to feel more confident probably in your career, you're going to feel more confident maybe in your marriage, more confident with as a parent. You know, I think those those confidence sort of uh, transcends and overlaps with different domains. You know, if you're confident, picture, I don't know, if you picture like a, a couple different cups, right? And you have a cup that is career and you have a ton of confidence and you just keep pouring confidence into your career and pouring it in your career. Eventually that confidence is going to overflow. That cup is going to fill and it's going to overflow and it's going to spill into other domains or other cups in your life. But here's the thing. You think about what you want to see, feel, or experience, right? Uh, you think about all those motivations and, and how what you really want lies beyond what you want. But you can't get to the heart of what you really want until you drill. And you got to drill down. And you got to ask, why do you want what you want? And you can't really start drilling until you recognize that limitation, until you see there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be. And you need to at least have an idea of where to start drilling, right? I don't think that I'm, I'm not a professional in this area either, but I, I think that people, when they look for minerals, when they look for gold, when they look for coal, when they look for oil, they don't just start randomly drilling in places, right? They kind of know where to look based on past experiences, based on we found oil here before, there's probably a good chance we're going to find oil here again. Uh, what does the soil look like? What does the climate look like? They know where to look, right? You need to at least have an idea of where to start drilling down if you want to strike oil. 
without limitation and without need, there's no creativity. There's no problem solving. There's no autonomy. So without, I don't know, the internal combustion engine, we'd have no need for oil, right? So we have this product. We have this internal combustion engine. Therefore, we need oil, right? An engine will be very limited if you don't have oil. Therefore, we need the oil. So with problems comes creative solutions. Uh, Necessity is the mother of invention, right? Without limitation and without need, there's no creativity, no problem solving, and thus there's no autonomy, right? You're not a human being if you don't have problems, if you don't have challenges. And again, this does not suggest we should create need. But I think there is there is in the marketplace of maybe ideas and in the marketplace of philosophies, I think there's sort of a an adjacent free market here. Because again, we don't need to create need, but the free market sort of dictates that if there's a need, let the market fill it. And if the market doesn't fill it, then maybe it's not really a need. Similarly, if you have a need and you either can't or you are unwilling to brainstorm ways to solve that need or brainstorm ways to bridge that gap of where you are and where you want to be, I would ask, is it really a problem? Is it really a need? Is it really a desire that you have to change? I don't think we need to create need, but I think we need to empower people to transcend their limitations. And there's a difference in that. I'm going to say that again. This doesn't suggest we create need, but that we empower people to transcend limitation. I think Hegel's limitation has far more value than Marx's materialism. And I understand like this is a podcast about health and wellness and weight loss, but this all ties into it, right? It's so much more than just weight loss. It's so transcendent beyond weight loss that it's, I think it's, almost unfathomable because there's an infinite amount of possibilities that could exist outside of that weight loss, right? I want to lose weight so I feel confident. Well, what would confidence do for you? Well, I can go to the beach. Confidence would manifest itself in my marriage. Confidence would manifest itself in my career. I would feel better about what I see when I look in the mirror, right? And I understand there's, there's an element to, um, you think about things like BMI um, and and um, body fat percentage and things like that. It's not necessarily the be all end all of metrics, right? It's a metric, not the metric. And I think there's some limitations there, but there's something to be said for liking what you see in the mirror and being confident and knowing that, you know what? I worked hard to get where I am. And I really maintained and I I lifted weights for five years and I I went through some pain and some anguish and some struggles to get here, but I got here and it's worth it. And the reason that I I talk about things like this and the reason I, I, I think I think about weight loss and health in this way is because you think about materialism, right? And you think about the sort of Marxist material ideas that human beings, we shouldn't want for anything right? And and equity and equality and things like that. I think just as much as you are so much more than a number on the scale, you're so much more complex and so much more unique than just possessions and just a series of material items, right? Just because you have all your physical needs met, that doesn't make you a complete human being. What makes you a complete human being is limitation. And I think one thing that is sort of universal and that is transcendent among humanity, of course, it's going to manifest itself in different ways, you know, in the Western world, the Eastern world, in other countries and other cultures. But we're all limited. We're all finite to some degree. One way or the other, we're all finite. We're all limited. And I think that's transcendent. And that is um, a universal truth among humanity. And, and I like, I like that idea. I really like the idea that um, we're limited, but there's so much value in transcending that limitation and um, a lot of benefits that lie beyond that limitation. Sometimes the smartest thing you can say is, I don't know, because saying I don't know leads itself to limitation. The very fact that something is determined as a limitation 
implies that the limitation is already transcended. So I have this podcast up in blog form on the website. I'll put the link in the description. Maybe I'll put a link across the screen on the episode, um, on the Chiron, on the, uh, the title here. Um, but thank you so much for listening. I wanted to remind everybody we're working on some uh, Patreon content. We have a Patreon page up. Um, you can support us on Patreon. You can support us on PayPal. You can donate. Um, we're trying to, uh, we're, we're brainstorming some more ideas. We have some more things in the work, but become a patron. Um, you get a free shirt. Depending on what tier you join, you get some other goodies. So we're working on uh, ordering some of those goodies and making sure that we have some specialized or unique content for our patrons. Um, again, thank you so much for listening. Thank you to those who have supported me on social media, for those who have interacted with me. Um, I am working on having a guest on this podcast. Uh, it's a colleague of mine. Um, she's very into physical fitness, weightlifting, things like that. I believe she's held or set some kind of records. Um, we had some issues scheduling it. She was ill and then was moving and then hurt her neck and there was just a whole thing and I kind of just decided, you know what, we'll put it on hold for now. Um, so I figured I would throw this podcast out there and give you guys some new content. Again, thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time.